Green Team, it's your boy D Neil back with another reaction video, guys. Here we are with why are um, why are Americans so bad at geography? American explains. We watched one video where where we found out that it's geography's fault that we're so bad at geography, and that's all we're gonna say. Well, uh, let, let's get another perspective. Uh, before we jump into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Ring notification bell, get a video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. Social media and Patreon, all up top. You don't subscribe to any of it, put all the links in the description. All you gotta do is hit the link, follow me, talk to me. Guys, I'm human, I talk back. If you guys got a favorite video, suggest you to subscribe to Patreon or in the description, there's a Google form link. What we got? What's up, everybody? Today, I will be answering a question that I get all the time. Why are Americans so bad at geography? I think I get this question because there are a lot of videos on the internet where people ask Americans simple questions about geography and they just fail miserably. What? That's facts. We've seen a lot of videos on this channel. We've seen a lot. Internet where people ask Americans simple questions about geography and they just fail miserably. What's the capital? Uh, Sao Paulo? No. No, one more. Uh, I'm not sure. It used to be Rio, but now it's, it's Brasilia. Brasilia? Oh. But, of course, I'm generalizing a little bit because not all Americans are bad at geography, but I think there just are most. some cultural and historic... Just most of us. Not all, but most of us. But a good, a good amount. Because not all Americans are bad at geography, but I think there are some cultural and historic reasons why Americans are bad at geography, so I'm not here Hello. to defend them or criticize them. I'm here to explain. So let's give a Thank few you. reasons why I think this is the case. The first one is that we don't study geography as a subject. We study social studies, which is a subject that includes geography and various other subjects like history, world history, ancient cultures. There's very little specific time for geography. Okay, so I remember learning a little bit about longitude, latitude, equator, prime meridian, but I don't remember learning too much about geography. And most of the geography was focused on American geography, state capitals, Rocky Mountains, Great Plains, Great Lakes. We didn't learn too much about other countries' geographies. We didn't learn too much about other countries' histories. If we did, it was ancient cultures like Greece, Rome, Egypt. So we didn't focus Yo. too much on like the French Revolution, Napoleonic Wars. We actually only learned about the Napoleonic Napoleonic Wars through like the War of 1812, which is how I, need, I, don't, I don't even know nothing about no Napoleonic Wars. I don't. <laughs> but what are you saying? We it's social studies and the, I feel like we feel like geography got pushed to the back. Where it, no, we didn't really focus on geography. Geography is more of a if we got extra time. Then we can do geography. In, in school, it's rare that you have extra time. <laughs> so we, it wasn't a main focus in school. We learned about the Napoleonic Wars through like the War of 1812, which is how the Napoleonic Wars affected us. Then we had the Louisiana Purchase. And when we learned about the Louis, Seven Years I War, which is a big war in Europe before our Revolutionary War, we call it the French and Indian War. So it has different names. So we have a very ethnocentric way of learning history and geography. And I think that definitely affects why we struggle. And there's a lot of problems with the way we learn things in school. And I could talk about that in another day. Another thing is that America is a big country. America is not a country. You see, I'm, I'm proving my point. United States is a big country. So you could travel from one end to the country to the other hours and hours and you never encounter a different culture. Yeah, of course we have. Yeah, yeah, and that's complete fact. Regional differences, different dialects, and we have different ethnic groups, but you're not leaving the country. Going from Texas to Oklahoma is not like going from <laughs> France to Germany. Different languages, different cultures, Facts. different histories. So there's a big difference. Europe, there are a lot of small countries with many neighbors that have different histories, different cultures. So you kind of are forced to learn a little bit about different cultures just by proximity. We don't have that issue. Also, mm -hmm. the domestic market in the United States is so big that most people's day to day, they don't need to know about other countries. Of course, there are a lot of people involved in international trade, but the average American, the market is so big, they don't really come across other countries in their day-to-day. -day. And that's what I'm saying. In the other video, she said we're basically on a need-to-know basis. Basis. Only time we feel like we need to know about, and, and, and I'm not saying it should be this way. I'm just telling you how it is. Only time you feel like you need to know about another country or anything is if you're traveling to that country, if you're traveling to that place, then you look up things on that place and you, you figure things out about it. But other than that, we...
I, I guess we just figure that it won't help us to know everything where everywhere is in the world if we're not gonna go there. But keep it going. The market is so big, they don't really come across other countries in their day to day. And I think the fact that English is the lingua franca of almost every business operation in the world. So if a Chinese person is speaking to a Japanese person, they'll use an interpreter, or if they both speak another language, it's probably English, even though they're both far away from United States and London. This. United States and London, United States and England. So this is kind of an advantage we have. I think we should definitely focus on learning other languages and learning about other cultures. Agreed. But because of this advantage Agreed. that almost anywhere you go, you can find people speaking English. I think we feel less of a need to learn about other cultures and other languages. That's not to say that we don't have a lot of immigrants that or first generation, second generation that know about other countries because they live there, their parents are from there, their grandparents are from there. Just kind of talking about the general American experience. Also, when we travel, if you live in Europe, you can fly to any other country for like $25. It's pretty cheap. In the United States. You can fly to any other country for $25? That's it. No! I'll be all over the place. All over the place. Like, that's crazy to me. That's awesome. 25? Wow. You can fly to any other country for like $25. Y'all let me know. Cheap. In the United States, we tend to travel within the United States. We go to Disney, the local beach, Vegas, California. And that's going to cost you hundreds to go from one place to another. I don't know no flight that's ever $25. Ever. Travel within the United States. We go to Disney, the local beach, Vegas, California, and maybe Mexico or Canada. I didn't leave the country until I was 18. I went to Montreal in Canada. And I think that's the experience for most middle class families. For people that are you know, poor, it's difficult to travel anywhere, let alone another country. And for people that are rich, yeah, they can travel to, to Paris or other countries, but that's a small percentage of the population. I don't remember having many friends when I was a kid that went to other countries. For a lot of middle class kids in Latin America, if they have a little bit of money, they can plan a trip to Disney or another country. So travel is a great way to learn about other countries. And I think most Americans yes. don't really travel, excluding like resorts in the Caribbean and Mexico and in Canada. So there's a lot less travel. Also, the domestic news is mostly focused on domestic issues. If you watch the BBC, I think they do a good job of covering the whole world. I mean, I don't watch that much international news, but the BBC would be one example I have. In Brazil, I spend a lot of time in Brazil. They tend to focus on the United States, Europe, and other Spanish speaking countries. Whereas the United States pretty much focuses on the United States or even when they're talking about the wars that they've been involved in for many, many years, the coverage is not very detailed. And you, know, you could ask an American, the capital of Afghanistan, you might not know. That's pretty sad. The other thing that's kind of sad, and I think that's... What is the capital of Afghanistan? Oh, it's, it's not my fault. It's, it's kind of, okay, it's my fault. But uh, that... It doesn't matter. Keep it going. Afghanistan. We're not going to talk about it. It's pretty sad. The other thing that's kind of sad, and I think that's going to be a problem in the future, is the idea of American exceptionalism. So first of all, I think America has done a lot of great things. The United States has done a lot of great things. They've done a lot of bad things, too. The idea of American exceptionalism, I don't think is very useful. It's a thing that actually politicians use to control the people. But to think you're the best in everything and the rest of the world is just living in this unorganized chaos is not good. It hurts our reputation abroad. And then when people see things like people storming the Capitol building, they say, ah, oh, look at him. Man. So I think we need to focus on what we do well, fix what we do wrong, and kind of learn from mm. other cultures. Most of the great advancements in world history have been through cultural exchanges. Marco Polo went to China. When we had this Colombian exchange between new world and old world, these things are what creates innovation. So I think it's important to always have your eye other parts of the world. Thank you. Another thing is Hollywood. So most countries know about America through our entertainment, music, yes. Hollywood. We don't have anything like that for other countries. Maybe we'll watch a French film, we'll listen to reggaeton, but we don't know so much about other countries because we don't consume so much media from other countries. Movies, shows, music. That's changing a little bit. You know, the Oscar last year went to Parasite, which is a Korean film. Reggaeton is huge. I mean, is that a good movie? I want to check. I, I want to check it out. Is that a good movie, y'all? Y'all, if you've seen it, let me know in the comments. A little bit, you know. The Oscar last year went to Parasite, which is a Korean film. Reggaeton is huge in the United States, but that also has to do with the fact that we do have a huge Latino population. The United States is very diverse, but I'm talking about more the education system. And in the United States, you could find anything. 
but these are just some reasons why the average American might struggle with geography. Finally, soccer. Soccer is not very important in the United States. There are a lot of fans. I like soccer. I grew up playing soccer, FIFA, but a lot of Americans don't watch soccer. They don't know about soccer. In almost every other country in the world, soccer is the number one sport. So even if you're from any country in Latin America, you know Madrid, you know Barcelona, you know where Manchester is that is not in London. These things that Americans might not know if they don't like soccer. So playing with different soccer teams and FIFA, or watching different soccer games, watching the World Cup, you get an understanding that there are these different countries, different cultures in different places. And that's a way for- Yeah, I, I used to, I love playing FIFA and I'm a monster at it. I'm a monster at it. But I used to uh, want Cristiano Ronaldo all the time and I'd have to ask my friend like, Cause you know you gotta search. I think it has like well when I played it had like country at the top and then it had that all the teams and that. So I was like, bro, where, where does Ronaldo play? Like what? <laughs> I know the team, but I, I I don't know what country it's gonna fall under. I just I just didn't know. He always knew, but I I just never knew. Watching the World Cup, you get an understanding that there are these different countries, different cultures, and different places, and that's a way for kind of the working class to get an idea of other countries where we don't really have that in the United States. That being said, a lot of Americans are watching soccer now. And I think you will see over time with the internet, it's so easy to know what's going on in other parts of the world. Even back, you can get involved in a TikTok teacher that's teaching about other parts of the world. So it's pretty interesting to find out this kind of stuff. And I think this will change, but I do think there's a lot of problems that we need to fix in our education system, culturally, and just kind of how we see the world because geography is important. You can only understand history if you understand geography. And if you can't understand geography and nice. history, you can't really understand where we're going. Hope you enjoyed it. That's See you next a good time. point. Peace. I didn't think about it like that. That's a great point. I must I won't say that. I'm gonna start attempting to learn. I'm gonna start attempting to learn more about geography and history. That's all we got for this one. You guys got a favorite video do you want to see me react to you can subscribe to Patreon or in the description section there's a Google form link. Hit the link, fill out your suggestions, send it to me. Want me to get to yours faster, fill out premium. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Ring notification bell. Get a video, a thumbs up so it gets suggested. Social media, Patreon, all up top. You subscribe to any of it. Follow all the links in the description. All you got to do is hit the link. Follow me. Talk to me. Love talking to you guys. You guys are the most incredible team on YouTube. It's your boy, Dania. Out.